I'm doing my Dark Urge playthrough in Baldur's Gate 3 on Honor Mode, and holy shit, Honor Mode really, like, crushes you in the prostate. Jesus Christ. I, I lost my first Honor Road run, Honor Mode run to the Owlbear, because the Owlbear's legendary ability in Honor Mode is, hey, what if there was a second Owlbear? And every boss enemy gets Enrage, which gives it uh, resistance to physical damage uh, when it hits, like, 50% health and multi-attack. So it's like they one-shot you, and they take half damage, and there's another one, and they have the same abilities, you know? What the f Jesus Christ. What's Honor Mode? Uh, in Honor Mode in Baldur's Gate 3, uh, you only have one save. If your party wipes, that's it. You can't go back to previous saves. So uh, you have one save, uh, you have to do everything right the first time, and uh, every enemy is harder, and they get bonuses to all their saving throws, and ability checks, and attack rolls. And it certainly feels like they get bonuses to their damage, but that might just be my perception. Uh, and they have a lot new, like a lot of new abilities. How long is a single campaign? Pretty f long. What if you die at like 80 hours? No way. If you die at 80 hours, you can continue in custom mode, which means that you're no longer getting the achievement for an honor road play, uh, honor mode playthrough, but it keeps that difficulty level. Uh, if I'm 80 hours in and I die, I'm doing that. But like basically the game kind of requires you like every person in your party needs to have like the 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 bloodlust potions, the speed potions, the resistance potions stacked up on healing pots, poisons, keep all the enemies poisoned, prone everything like stun this crowd control that like you need to be like on your shit with the CC and like the buffs and everything, you know, you're you, you are going to get a lot of work uh, out of your alchemy. Who you romancing this from? Uh, Mithara or Mith Mithrana or, Mithra or whatever. Do party members permadie? No, you can res people, just like normal, yeah. And you will, because if you ever pick a fight that you can't win, you basically, like, everyone flees, or, like, one person has to run as fast as they can, uh, and, and then, like, like, sheepishly res them later, <laughs> you know? Who's in your party? Well, I can't get Minthara till the end of Act 2, so for right now, it's Lizelle, Shadowheart, and, uh, Asterion. Uh, Gale lost his hand, whoops. I uh, killed Karlak because she knew I was evil, and, uh, Housen got killed by the goblins, and Will left the party. So all the good people are out. All the morally good people are done. And Gale. Gale. <laughs> Little bitch. Little bitch! I'm doing one now, normal spaceman. You can go to Moonrise Towers early, grab Thar, then run back to Act 1. That sounds f dangerous to do in an honor mode play. What, what, if I, what if I run into any of the unavoidable enemies in the way to Moonrise Tower? <laughs> like, what, like, single, like, some level 8 enemies show up and nuke me, you know? F that, no. I'm gonna get fireballed and instantly die. Can you? Yeah, I think you can. You can go all the way to Moonrise Towers. You just can't... I think that was patched. I don't know when... I don't know when they do the Act 1 thing. I, I don't know when they block off Act 1. I'm pretty sure it's after you do the Shar encounter. They patched it so you can easily get Minthara Dirt and Moonrise. Okay, if that's the case, then I am going to try what dude what if i sent one character there what if i sent my like stealthy like rogue there and all my other dudes stayed in camp so that if i if i die it's just 200 gold to bring me back you know um i might do that actually yeah at the very least i keep one person back so if there's a total f up rather than losing the entire run it's just 600 gold to get them back yeah get minthara out bring her back to camp mm, sounds pretty good Ooh. i thought entering the shadow cursed lands was the end of act one um, I think you can go back to Act 1. I think time advances if you do that in some instances. Yeah, like the Kresh, uh, the, with the Gith Yankee. There, stuff happens once you move into the Shadow Cursed Lands, but you can go back. But I don't want to skip anything, so I don't think I'm actually going to do this. But I'll look it up, I'll look it up. Minthara doesn't follow you back to Act 1. Really? Okay. Wait, what about Act 1.5, like the Underdark and stuff? Okay, then I might as well just finish it all then. What's the point if she's... Halsen doesn't either. Well, he's dead, so, you know. No, it's fine. Just keep spoiling the game. Okay, first of all, I haven't spoiled any major plot points. F*** you. We're just talking about mechanics. Second of all, you know what we're talking about. Plug your ears if you don't want to hear it. Third of all, trust me, we're talking about, like, the first half of the game. We already, we're not even... The, the major points haven't even been f mentioned, okay? Halsen doesn't have to be dead. It's fine that he's dead. He's a good guy, and I'm doing a dirge playthrough, so whatever. You can knock her out in the goblin cam. Just pick her up in Act 2. I, I'm doing an evil playthrough. We already raided the grove. I highly recommend half orc for the racial traits. What does what does half orc get you? Menacing, proficiency in intimidation, dark vision, relentless endurance. If you reach zero HP, you regain one hit point instead of becoming down. That's pretty good. When you score a critical hit with a melee weapon attack, an additional damage dice is added to your total damage. Oh wait, that's actually pretty good. 
So if you if you like stacked like crit stuff like like a, a lowering crit die or whatever and rerolls, you could you could just be critting out the. F you you can be critting everything, yeah. But half orcs don't get the large body for some reason. Oh, well, to be large, you have to be like horse sized, I think, or like, I'm pretty sure that in in five e golems, not golems, uh, um, yeah, no golems, right? Or what are they called? Uh, goliaths aren't even large. Go uh, goliaths, yeah. Five e doesn't like large PCs. It breaks dungeon design. Honest to God, are you guys ready for my the hottest take that's ever been dropped? Are you guys ready for it? You're not ready for this one. I kind of feel like I kind of feel like 5e bad. <laughs> I think that 5e is so focused. I know it's less focused on it than like earlier iterations, but 5e is still too combat focused. In reality, managing all the fiddly mechanics of all the actions, reactions, and bonus actions of all the characters that are doing, like, combat, and, and then, like, doing this either in, like, theater of mind or, like, doing it on a map or whatever, like, that is so much work, and it really limits design. I think stuff like that works better when people play D&D &D literally as, like, your party of four enters the dungeon, but nowadays people play D&D in 5e for, like, all kinds of shit. And even the modules that you can get for D&D 5e are way more varied in terms of the kinds of encounters that you have. I feel like they made an effort to make 5e more, like, approachable and, like, modular and player-friendly by making it more about advantage, disadvantage, context, stuff like that. But I think they need to go more in that direction. Because if you want to play a super fiddly, like, mechanically detailed, like, move 2.8 feet in this direction so that your shatter spell hits one more target... If they do that, I think you should just do that in a video game. It works a lot better in Baldur's Gate 3. That is, does nobody else feel that way? Look at how much more you can do with the mechanics of 5e um, in Baldur's Gate 3 than you can when actually playing tabletop, you know? In tabletop, managing all of the crazy, like, buffs and debuffs and stuff, like, it would be insane. It would take so much work and, like, really bog down the experience. No matter how experienced you are in doing it, just managing the math and everything and all the stuff... There's so much stuff you have to roll on and keep track of, whereas in a computer, of course, it's all kept like that. So, you know, now you get used to it. I, I, I've been playing D&D for a long time. I, I, I'm i not speaking from a lack of experience. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of tabletop games that are more, um, uh, more flexible and contextual, which is the whole point of role playing, right? Like if you're just following like dice and, and math and stuff, then you could do that in a computer. You know, if, if you're, you know, contextual role playing stuff is... Uh, that's why I like Original Sin 2, because it can be way more tactical because of computer power. Yeah, I recently replayed a little bit of Divinity Original Sin 2, and it was such a wild trip for me to realize how much more broken everyone is. The power scaling in Divinity Original Sin is so much higher than, than in D&D. Like, at level 1 in Divinity Original Sin, it's like, yeah, I, I can, like, nuke, like, from... from orbit and I can summon entire rainstorms and I can like lightning bolt and stuff like the a, 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 a f round as like a level one character in D&D &D is a 50-50 roll on doing four damage with a sword strike and a level one attack is like I'm going to you know fire an ice bolt and then electrify the ice and like nuke this entire f building you know um the the power scaling is so different Honestly, 5e makes melee-based characters seem really boring in the mid-levels. Casters from like 4 to 8 or so. Yeah, and the reason for that is because doing mechanical stuff is interesting in a computer because it's really satisfying to be a melee character like Lazelle or whatever, click on a target and see like 17 damage when most characters have 20 or so, you know? Whereas in 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 like role playing, it's very boring to just say I walk forward and stab them, even if it's satisfying to see it in a game because of the kinesthetics of the attack, right? If if it's just being done in role play, that's not satisfying. It's always going to be more satisfying to say like yeah, fireball because there's like you can describe it and stuff, you know. I mean, you can describe anything, but still, absolutely not Yonama, not even a little bit. I can only take Shadowheart missing ninety nine percent. Is does anyone else feel like Shadowheart sucks? I feel like no matter what. She plays as Shadowheart misses more than everyone else. What are you doing, Shadowheart? What 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 build do you need to not? I, I don't I don't know if it's like what, what what is it? Is there like a hidden role factor in? What what are you doing? I feel like Z Lizelle never. Lizelle is like a demigod. Like from from the moment go, Lizelle's just like yep, a uh, uh, a battle master fighter, two handed, great weapon master. Let's go, fifty six damage at level two because you're you're doing like crit action surge crit like fuck whatever just soul of the game you know meanwhile shadowheart has all the power of the gods at her fingertips and she fucks up everything <laughs> her ability scores aren't spare i'm saying even after i respec her though in person you got to do disarms and grapples they're fun and they annoy dms yeah but nobody ever actually does those 
a waste of a turn. It's not a waste of a turn. Grappling is not a waste of a turn. Trust me. The most annoying thing I've ever dealt with as a DM is a f net. Yeah, how do, how do you think the characters being netted feel? I always felt like most D&D &D rules were unnecessary. The main thing that I never got, the main thing that I've always wanted an explanation for, can somebody explain to me how health works in D&D? &D? Uh, so hold, hold on for a second, okay? Because at level one, you're like eight health or something. And at level 10, you know, you, you can be anywhere from like 50 to 100 health or whatever. The main thing I don't understand is like narratively speaking, is there a like in-universe explanation for your strength? Is it magical or is it just like you're better at avoiding critical hits? Because I always thought like if a person fires an arrow at you, it could kill you at level one. But then at level like 10, it can't kill you. A regular arrow, it can't kill you. So do you just like tank the arrow and like pull it out of you and like whoop because like you don't give a shit because you're that strong so are you strong in like an anime your power level is going up sense or are you strong in a like narratively it's just the arrow didn't really hit you as hard because it like grazed you or whatever you know um is there an in character explanation because otherwise you would have more like super powerful legendary characters being killed by like a single arrow but that doesn't really happen so there has to be some Health isn't necessarily just physical health, I guess. As a DM, I view the HP as your morale. Yeah, but sometimes there are things that hit you directly that can't be, like, run off that way, right? Like, um, a finger of death, for example, is a, like, or anything that, like, directly hits you, uh, uh, um, like, what's the explanation for something like magic missile, where a salvo of magic missiles, if they hit a normal person, will blow them up, but if it hits a high-level person, like, they'll just tank it, like, it's 100% hit unless you shield, so it hits you, it does all the damage. So, like, what? Are, are your bones physically stronger? Like, I guess what I'm asking is, if you swung a sword at, like, a level 20 legendary warrior, and you're just a weak dude, would it clang off their skin like you've hit metal? Because that's always what I interpreted it as. Because how else could you explain? Because you could literally, like, narratively, if they just sat there and were like, yeah, hit me, you could swing a sword at them, and, like, you would hit them in the neck, and it just wouldn't do shit. So is it, like... So what is is it just like you didn't hit them that well in the neck or 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 or, or is their skin like metal now? HP is not realism but a concession to power scaling. I think it'd be more interesting if that was like canonical in universe, right? It's not like magic exists in Faerun, right? Like why not just say like as you get stronger like magical energy accumulates in the bodies of the powerful even if they can't use magic, right? That makes sense. Like the magic is like everywhere. It's it's like the lifeblood of the universe, right? It's it's the it's the astral plane, the ethereal it mingles in with the material. So it's like, yeah, you're stronger, your will attracts magic to you. So like, yeah, no, your skin and bones are literally stronger. Like that's not yeah. Another thing that always got me is I, I feel like um, characters are too slow. You can't have a character who's 20 strength but still has 30 feet of movement speed. That doesn't make sense. If you're stronger, your legs are stronger. Like, I know you can get around with that with jumping to an extent, but it's like, it, it, it always seemed kind of odd to me that it's like, yeah, you have this like uber powerful, super cool, like 22 dexterity creature and they run 30 feet, 60 feet in a dash. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's, there's always, this, this is a problem, this is the problem when you have so many mechanics overlapping, it's that it's almost impossible to, like, keep some kind of consistency with them, unless you have a computer that's just auto-adjusting, like, statistics in the background, you know? I don't know. Well, dex isn't speed, it's reaction time. Yeah, but strength is just strength, right? Like, if, if you're thinking about it, like, proportionally, right? If, if, a, if, a, if, like, eight damage is enough to kill a human in a single hit, which is more or less, like, we can just use that as, as like, a baseline, right? Um, a, a, like, great weapon fighter, two-handing, like, you know, uh, great weapon style, like, you can do, like, 40 damage in a single strike. That should be enough to, like, knock through a building, you know? Right? It should be able to. Like, if, uh, uh, if, like, 40 damage in a strike would be, like, you have a great sword and you swing it left to right, and, like, there are, there are wood pillars that just get cleaved in the way. So... With that in mind, like, the idea of someone doing all that, and then they're just running at the speed of, like, a dad who's who's decided to take on jogging to fight off the midlife crisis or whatever. It's kind of odd. There used to be insta-kill rules for double nat 20s. Yeah, I guess that would have been, like, more of a realistic thing. You know, it's it's like a which system do you want to go with kind of thing, I guess. No, 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 Archray, I understand that would make, like, I would that would mean there are balance issues, you know? I, I'm just saying that, like, it's weird, it's weird to imagine, like, because you hear it sometimes in descriptions, like, this character is so strong and fast that you can barely hit them, you know, they attack four times in a turn, it's like they're a blur, and then they just run 30 feet, <laughs> you know? It's sick, you know a turn is six seconds, right? Six seconds. 
30 feet in six seconds. That's your like default running speed. You you god of fighting, you warrior, you soldier of, of the material plane, you know? That's a, it's it's just stuff like that, you know. But there's always stuff like that, right? The Doom Slayer in, in Doom Eternal runs at like slightly above regular speed. A and he's like incredibly strong. So I don't know, whatever. Running sixty feet in six seconds. If you if you dash, yeah. They're running 30 feet, then making four times. Okay, I would, Chad, come on. Don't don't pretend there's not an inconsistency. I understand. Like, I've played D&D &D for ages, okay? You, 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 like, you can just say, yeah, I understand that there is, like, a weirdness there, right? Yeah, it's a mechanical thing. Your GM sucks. I am the GM. Have you ran any campaign for 20 levels? Yes. Then you can change that stuff. I know. What do you, what, what? People get so defensive to, oh, then why don't you change it? I know, no shit. What do you, yeah, obviously. I'm just talking. What do you, fuck off. What do you want? Oh my god. Or or in Baldur's Gate 3, uh, Flavier. As a GM, what's your preferred way for players to level up? If they do something cool. <laughs> no, like, I, it, it, like big, I, I'm not tracking XP. That. It's like event shit, you know? It, that you kill a big bad or you do a big thing. Like, there you go, right? Like, it's uh, otherwise, like, yeah. Yeah, milestone. Yeah. Nobody tracks XP. And as someone who has a very bad habit of changing stuff as DM, that shit adds up and eventually bogs things down. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's also an issue. The, the more like little edits you make, the more like fiddly little things you have to keep up with. That's another problem with having a very mechanics based role playing game where it's like keeping making sure everyone knows the rules. And if you start changing anything, God help you, because that shit really does add up in terms of like little rules or like established. Like, what about this edge case? What about this edge case? And then you have to be like, OK, well, this or this or that. And then you have to keep track of it or it feels inconsistent. And you know what else? I don't like rolling on a d20. I've always thought it's really dumb that you can have a character who's 20 strength lose in an arm wrestling match to a character who's 10 strength off of like a very, uh, a very likely mismatch in rolling. You know what I mean? Like if you have like a plus five or even if it's athletics and you've got like a plus like eight or nine or whatever, it's very easy <clears throat> for a person who, who has zero strength, zero plus in athletics to get like a 16 and then the three on the other one and it's like oh they lose yeah but it's funny it's funny but at the same time it does like i don't know ha like rule like ha uh, yeah i don't know there, i i feel like it'd be cool if there was less overlap in between lack of skill and skill and some stuff you know what i mean having godlike strength is just a plus five yeah it's it's just weird <clears throat> Okay, now, now chat's just, like, advising me to try other systems. Thank you, you're all being very helpful, by the way. I'm talking about D&D. &D. You're, you're the 58th plea for me to try another system that I have probably tried before is, is much appreciated. Thank you. Um, you're, you're engaging with the subject to the exact extent that I would expect you guys to. Thank you. Just get good at setting challenge levels. It's a contest. If two people are, are at harm wrestling, that's a strength contest or an athletics contest or whatever else, you know. I would like it if your modifier determined what dice you roll. Why not just have it be D6s? Wouldn't that be better? Like, uh, a person with no points in strength would be a 1d6 plus 0, and then a person with, like, 20 strength would be plus 5, or 1d6 plus 5, meaning that it would have to be a roll of a 6 to a 1, an incredibly unlikely outcome, 1 in 36, I guess, um, for, for the weaker person to, uh, to, to prevail. Failures are good, though. I mean, within, like, yeah, but you don't want it all to be a crapshoot when you've built a character that's very good at something, you know? Like Initiative in Baldur's Gate 3? Yeah, actually, they do this in Baldur's Gate 3, probably because they realized it would be really frustrating for, like, in every combat encounter, for everyone's uh, initiative to basically be random. Uh, because even if you get, like, plus 5 on decks and then plus 5 because of the alert feat, a plus 10, like, you're still reliably going to be middle of the pack, you know? So instead they make it, like, a, a, a D6 or whatever. Um, or a D4. A D4 on, um, uh, for Initiative. 